What is up, Hardcore Nation? It's Hardcore Christopher here, and I do apologize for the lack of videos, but allow me to explain. For the past two days, I have been working, well, I've been helping to get a deck built and to tear down the old, the old deck. We got a new porch, and I was helping the guy... Well, Tuesday I was helping him tear tear down the old porch, which I pushed myself, and after a long day, I hopped in the shower, brushed my teeth, ate some chicken and french fries, and went off to Dreamland. Wednesday... I was unloading wood. And I did not work that hard yesterday, but with everything that happened, we got we got to chit chatting and, and, and everything. Before I knew it, time just flew by, and I had to go to church for Bible study, and so. When I got back, all I wanted to do was go to bed. And so, to make up for the lack of uploads, I will be doing Tuesday's reaction today. Wednesday's reaction today. And a gaming video today. Am I pushing myself? Yes, I am. So, this... This, the video I, no, the video I will be reacting to is the shameful celebrity deathmatch game. Failure of failures. This is by Score PN. And let's get right into this. I said, let's get right into this. Him. I said, let's get right into Okay. 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 So, so before, before I get into the Celebrity Deathmatch game, I have to explain just some of the things I did as a big fan of the series. Because, because this, this series to me was, was not, not just, just a great show, show but an aesthetic and quality presentation brought to us by Golden God, God, formerly known as Eric Falk. And the TV. This claimated television program not only had celebrities battling each other in a fight to the death, but it was also created with stop motion, which is one of the most impressive and difficult things to pull off, especially when there's a scheduled deadline. Every season from the first to the fourth would gradually increase its quality. Fights would last longer, finishing moves would be even bolder than ever, and as years went by, we had more celebrities in mind that we'd love to see take a beating as in off against other celebrities. So, of course, as an excited fan of the series, I would record episodes on multiple VHS tapes. The best days were when the series was given to MTV2 when they aired a marathon of seasons 1 to 4. And to top it off, they usually follow up by airing a marathon of Beavis and Butthead episodes. But recording episodes wasn't the only thing I did as a fan. At one point, when I didn't have certain episodes or any form of obtaining footage online, 
I go to the website where you can watch short clips of season three episodes, and I would literally record the audio of these short clips and listen to them while I do my own CDN fights. Audio tapes, meaning I don't even watch the show, just listen to 30 second clips. Jesus. Fucking fanboy, am I right? Other things I did was buy boxes full of clay to create my own celebrity deathmatch models. But unfortunately, I never got to take any pictures of the celebrities I made. The main one I remember that actually looked pretty damn close to the one from the show was an Eddie Murphy clay model. I just wish I took at least one picture of that one. But that's still not it, folks. Another thing I did as a fan that couldn't get enough of CDM was printing out as many colored images of every picture I could find, including the 65 page printout of the Celebrity Deathmatch episode, which includes a short description of every outcome in each episode. I guess it's a good thing I did this because the Celebrity Deathmatch website gave me tons of images that are no longer available, even if you use them way back in their archive. And I can't even find the website that came with this episode guide either. I can see that most of these were printed in 2003, and seeing as they're impossible to find online these days, then I'm definitely going to hold on to these. But anyways, this is just a description of all the things I did as a big fan of the series. I still love the series, and I can guarantee you that I will create as many entertaining videos based on that show alone. Which brings me to the video game. The first time I stumbled upon any such information regarding the Celebrity Deathmatch game was thanks to this little gaming handbook that showed the upcoming GameCube and Game Boy Advance games of 2003, which included Celebrity Deathmatch for GameCube. That's when I saw that my favorite television series was going to finally get its own game. I didn't have a GameCube during that time, but I did have an Xbox, and the game was also going to be released for the Xbox and PlayStation 2. So I actually ended up with a copy of the Xbox version at my local Walmart for about 30 bucks. And that's a price tag that gives you a little bit of hope. Like, you better believe this game's worth paying 30 bucks for, right? But $30 is all I had. If I had enough money to buy a game based on Celebrity Deathmatch, there's no way I would take that chance. Oh boy. For this review, I bought another copy of the game, this time for the PS2. I would have gotten it for the Xbox again since I forgot what happened in the original copy I owned, but it doesn't matter, both are exactly the same. But would you believe that the GameCube version was never released? Ironic how this game was revealed to me on the Nintendo handbook, and yet it was the only console that did not get a release of the CDN game. So let's, let's get started on this review. review. Gotham games, huh? Hey. Wait a minute. I recognize these game publishers. They gave us Austin Powers pinball. That's not a good sign. Big Eight Productions? The guys who gave us the Simpsons wrestling? Oh no! There's no way this game could be as bad as that PS1 abomination. They had to have learned from their mistakes. After all, the Simpsons wrestling game came out in 2001, two years before this game. They had to have read the reviews and understood why he got such low scores. scores. There's still no. Plus, look at that. It's a nice little reference to give us this message before the game begins, similar to how the show gives us this message before the episode begins. Only this time it ends with, anyway, it's just polygons. Not bad! You reference something that's part of the show! I like that! The title screen presents itself with the main theme song playing in the background, building up the intensity that is Celebrity Deathmatch, and... After 10 seconds, it then loops the next 5 seconds of the theme song. Over and over and over. Pretty much non-stop until you begin a match. And guess what? This is literally the only background song you'll hear in this game. It's only 5 seconds repeatedly looping, but only for the main menu. There's literally no background music that plays during a fight. Everything is dead silent. 
uh, except for the sound effects that play with each and every move from the celebrity characters. Oh, and they're very limited on character moves, so we prefer to hear the same four to five sound effects being repeated over and over until someone dies. I wish there wasn't bad. Buffering. Gotta love it. Not really. This reminds me that I tried so hard to fight this game. I tried denying that this was a terrible game. Only four to five attacks can be performed, including a special move? That's... that's not bad, right? Some of my favorite games growing up only have about three to five different attacks as well. The regular NES games. No, this has some charm. It has to, right? It has a, uh, it has battle damage. Yeah, I love battle damage. Not every game even includes it till today, even. Okay, so that's one good thing. What else do we have here? Well, uh, you gotta love the fact that they actually included the voices of Johnny Gomez and Nick Diamond, Johnny voiced by Maurice Schlafer, and the actual was Nick. Even those Lane and Dan Panopoulos reprise their roles as themselves. <laughs> yes, this is getting better. Let's move to more positives. The theme song is here. Only the first 10 seconds of the title screen, and then the next 5 seconds is continuously looping at an annoying rate, but, but it's here nonetheless. More positives. Look at that, uh, look at the front cover. How detailed are these figures? Makes you believe that they're still images from real episodes of the show, right? But that's not exactly something you can count as a positive for the game. Let's find something awesome with the gameplay. Uh, okay, so the gameplay may not feel like it's fun. You know, the, the main reason why we play games. But maybe the special moves and fatalities can make up for this. specific celebrity special moves, but most of them are not worth using. They're not spectacle, they don't deal a lot of damage, and by the time you can use it, you'll already be able to finish off your opponent, sometimes even before the special bar has filled up. The only ones I like are Cindy Margolis' and Frankenstein's. Cindy's because she puts on a hockey mask like Jason and uses a chainsaw, which is actually capable of cutting off your opponent's arms and legs. This is what I want to see in a Celebrity Deathmatch game. Unfortunately, it's one of very few attacks that can remove wounds. So, they didn't really use this feature to their advantage. I think every character should have had their own limb moving special moves as well. Otherwise, you'll only want to choose Cindy Margolis just to get creative with the fight. Frankenstein's special is awesome because it brings in a special guest character. The zombie fight version of Stacy Cornbread will appear and bite the opponent a few times. I love Stacy, I'm glad to see her make a brief appearance like this. As for the finishing moves...
Pink Deadly Lions mentality behind like with those, and especially in this game, I don't count two to be fantastic. Those were Jerry Springer's finisher and Norman Manson's. All because Maryland summons kept a duty to obliterate the opponent, similar to Freddy Krueger's finisher on the death. As for Jay Springer, Potato Con makes an appearance in a way that represents an episode of Jay Springer, so it's a great surprise and the right kind of fan service. Unfortunately, he doesn't kill the opponent. They just cut away as he continued beating them. I don't like that because the technical part's not over. If anything, this could have been used as a special move for Jay Springer, because the other special moves that include a cameo appearance basically are the same as what Potato Con did. You know what, let's look at the celebrities. Exactly who are the celebrities included in the game? I gotta say, the inclusion of Mr. T isn't bad. I don't know why he never did end up fighting in the show, even when he did appear in two episodes. In the first season, it's when Stacey Cornbread interviewed him, and in the fourth season, when he appeared at the end of the 11th episode to collect money from Nick. This was also the same episode where Miss Cleo fought against John Edward. So now, Mr. T can finally get a shot in the ring. Looking at the character roster, Cindy Margolis is the only one who never appeared in the celebrity that show. So I welcome her appearance. It's a shame they didn't include more celebrities that But to be honest, that's the least of my concerns with this game. The game can be beaten in about 20 minutes. Just spam an overpowered move and you'll beat each opponent in seconds. Especially if you're playing as Cousin Grimm. He deals an insane amount of damage for- That is sad, especially when you pay $30 for something. So, there are only 6 episodes. 3 matches for each episode. So that means just win in all 18 fights and that's it. You've unlocked everything in the game. I've seen demos take up much more time to end than the entirety of this game. It's an early embarrassment to the video game industry, but most importantly, an embarrassment to the fans of the series. Season 1 and 4. Ah, man, seriously though, where is the effort with these? Some of these don't even make sense. First of all, why is Carmen Electra a cyborg? The more damage you deal to her, the more she's revealed to be a cyborg. And since this game doesn't have a story mode, character bios, or any sort of information to explain why she isn't human, then why is she a cyborg? Was Carmen Electra in a movie where she played a robot? Is it supposed to be some sort of pun on her last name? In the first season of CBM, Carmen Electra fought against Jenny McCarthy, and there was no mention of her being a cyborg. Heck, the only celebrity who was a cyborg was actually Arnold Schwarzenegger in his fight against Sylvester Stallone. And there, it only made sense because of his role as the Terminator. Here, I'm just confused as hell. Looking at the character roster again, this just looks like a group of has-beens. I'm surprised I don't see the Spice Girls, Backstreet Boys, or Bruce Willis. Surprisingly, NSYNC is in the house. The whole group just agreed to be in the game. Too bad Backstreet Boys didn't. But I guess it wouldn't really matter, seeing as only two characters can fight in the ring. They can't have a team deathmatch, a free-for-all of four or five contestants, or have two against one like with Courtney Love's fight against Bill Krogan and Dave Kroll. Speaking of that fight, no Dome of Devastation? One of the best things to look forward to in a Celebrity Deathmatch episode was when the main event would sometimes have this decked out arena, giving the celebrities weapons to choose from. Or even death traps like with Leonardo DiCaprio's fight against Woody Harrelson. But look at that. They actually did come up with new arenas. Only they don't make a single difference to the fight. And what's even worse is that 4 out of 6 arenas appear to have hazards outside the ring. And there's no way to eliminate your opponent with a stage fatality. So what's the point of surrounding the arenas with these hazards if they're never used? I'm not even counting these random spikes that pop out. They feel pointless and out of place. This animation, a variety of character expressions when they get hit. That was one of the biggest things about the series. And the fact that it was clay. Which is something this game should have been as well, but... Well, being polygons doesn't separate from any other game that was released in that generation. Especially if it's this mediocre. 
Weapons will randomly appear throughout a match. There's an axe, a tennis ball launcher, dynamite, a crossbow, a bazooka, a musket, a crate, and a chainsaw. All of them but the axe and the chainsaw are not worth using. Both the chainsaw and the axe will chop limbs off once the opponent's health bar is like below 30%. There are power-up items as well, but honestly, nothing really makes the experience any less dull. Most of the time, you'll miss every shot with the projectile weapons. It would have been awesome if they could each be used to finish off an opponent, but who am I kidding? All these suggestions I have take at least some sort of effort. When it comes to finishing off your opponent, each character only has one finishing move. You can't finish off your opponent in any other way. So get used to seeing that exact same finishing move played constantly because the creators have no idea what variety means. As you can see, this game has a problem with variety. When they do give you options, they're extremely limited. Want another example? Let's take a look at the Create a Celebrity feature. Something that might have saved this game from being the same pancake it is. in the game is like the bottom bin of celebrities. Taking one look at the celebrities included in the game, you know that celebrity was required to make this game somewhat passable. I color. Oh, you guys actually care about that? Jeez. Whoa, Master Beater. Master Beater. Okay, that's a good one. That's a good one. I get it. Golden Gloves. Oh my god, that's it? You only have two? You guys suck! Man, Dead Jam fight for New York with laughter. Passes off of this. Anyways, we know this isn't Cavalry's. The most we can say is that this is the fucking bad thing. Alright, little kid version of that game. One, two, three, four. Yep, that's it. Wow, game. Okay. Nice going game. You can't make bald characters, African Americans, or dark shit Mexicans. And uh, what else do we have? Legs. Oh god, there's like no choices. Ugh! With those textures, it makes it look like she's got a ringworm. Just really dirty legs. Even Beavis and Bahad would look at that and be like, ugh! Oh, Beavis and Bahad, I wish I could create those characters. What the hell was the point of this? If limitations with creating a celebrity are this limited, then why even give us a chance to create a celebrity? Who do they want us to create with this? You have like five different facial features, five different face molds, a t-shirt, no hats, no glasses, only two special moves to choose from? Oh, and fuck you if this is what I'm using to create black celebrities. You have three different tan colors, this is like maroon or burgundy, and this is the only black skin tone available. They couldn't throw in Dennis Rodman or Mr. T's skin color as an option? Oh no, no, I guess that would be a little teeny weeny extra work. And we know that's not what they were going for, even though it's just reusing an asset for fuck's sake. Again, I wish there wasn't ads, but there's YouTube Premium, and Premium costs money, which I'm not giving. Same great gameplay, all new animations and textures. Turn based battle collection for serious RPG fans. A massive online community. Play better, play faster, play everywhere. Raid Shadow Legends, now on desktop. Yeah. 
RPGs. Sorry. Even though I have an RPG in Marvel. In Marvel Avengers. Okay, so now we know that the character was. The creator select mode is pathetic and the creator should be ashamed of the ass. And there's no story mode. So what the hell do we have left? Just these six, six generic, generic episodes, episodes with three new celebrities, celebrities and, and that's it? it? There, there are only 18 celebrities playable with the inclusion of the mummy, Frankenstein's monster, but they even get that shit wrong and call him Frankenstein. The Wolfman is here, but only that version. His human form isn't included. Even Zatar the Alien is playable though. That's good. In any other game, these three Hollywood monsters would seem like generic characters thrown in. But I guess since they did fight in the series, then we can make an exception for that. I love that Cousin Grimm is playable as well. But they also included a character model for Potato Con. Then why the fuck isn't he playable? Why isn't he a secret unlockable character? Those two are practically enemies! And we can't pin them against each other! Which reminds me, this game also includes a character model for both Stacy Corbett and Debbie Matinopoulos! Why the fuck aren't they playable? There aren't even Game Shark codes or Action Replay codes to allow you to use those character models in place of playable characters just to let you use your imagination and play using someone else's specific character moves. And make matters even worse than they already are. You can't make two created characters fight against each other. How fucking stupid is that? I'm telling you, this game has a problem with replay value. It hates extra features and options. It's like Resident Evil 3 Remake. I want to create celebrities and this game gives me a baby handful of options. So I can only create one little specific celebrity that looks identical to Adam Sandler. But I can't pin him up against Chris Rock either because, well, you know why? They also didn't include the chance to play as the referee Mills Lane. Even though they made a character model for him. Look at that. How empty does the CPM Stadium appear? There's only a handful of audience members spectating the fight. Was it too hard to just duplicate the same members like every game has done this for stadiums full of people cheering and such? Nah. That, that takes a minute or two to pull off and again, they weren't looking to try with this game. This is another positive thing, to actually include the hosts of the show as playable characters, who knew? It's, it's cool, cool that, that they even know. gave them different outfits. Johnny, Johnny wears his wizard costume, the one that he wore in the second season's Halloween episode, whereas he wears his gladiator costume from the time traveling episode from the third season. I would have liked it if they also included their hosting outfits. I mean, they're already wearing them, so why not include them? Well, it's most likely that they weren't included because they would have to think of unique attacks for each of them. And coming up with wizard attacks and gladiator attacks are the most easy and generic thing to pull off, so they have to choose the easy route, of course. Their finishing moves are nothing to be bothered with. Johnny just shrinks his opponent and steps on it. As for Nick, a tiger appears and tears the opponent to pieces. It would have been better if the satyr appeared instead of, you know, this tiger, but again, that would have required a little bit of time and effort for a new character model. So it's best to turn to the old Capcom routine of lazy reusing assets and reuse that tiger from Shannon's special move. Surprisingly, Ron Jeremy was the only one to voice his own character. That's about the only easter egg I can say. I would have loved it if the game was more like Def Jam Fight for New York, only with play models and animation effects for every unique hit. That game came out a year later, and you won't believe the amount of creativity and features included with that game. The gameplay is incredibly fun, you can combine different fighting styles and mix it up, there are so many special moves aka blazing moves, which were all insane and creative as hell. 
So when we look at this piece of shit and realize just how big it could have been, my god does it hurt to be this disappointed. If you're asking how could they have created 3D clay models for every character, I think it could have been doable. It's not impossible. Use pre-rendered backgrounds to make clay-like visuals, and as for the characters, use photorealistic of real clay figures and capture a fully rendered shot of each movement and attack from different angles, and that's it! They also could have gone with a 2D and 3D style fighting game, like with the Clay Fighters series. Anything that uses clay visuals and creativity. If all the games could pull it off, then there are no excuses. You know, this really could have been creative. You have an Egyptian arena, a spaceship, an arena surrounded by lava, a steel factory with a flattening machine in the back, and a cemetery? Hmm, what can we possibly think of at the top of our heads? for some stage fatalities and hazards. Well, let's look at the Egyptian arena. Spikes that randomly pop up are pathetic and pointless. Why not leave a unique item on the corners of the arena, like a jug full of bugs that attack the closest victim, include a pit full of mummies reaching through the bars. That way they can prevent anyone that stands on it from temporarily moving. And when a character loses all their health, let the winner use the pit as a stage fatality to have the mummies pull the opponent's body through the bars, like with the Pit of Puberty Arena. I'd like to see that flattening machine in the Steel Factory Arena be used as a stage fatality, as well as additional hazards that relate to machinery hazards in the workplace. The cemetery is probably the biggest letdown for me. I feel like they could have thrown in tons of celebrity references with the tombstones in the background. The only thing we see outside the ring is a group of generic Halloween ghosts. Generic Halloween ghosts. In Celebrity Deathmatch. How? How is it possible that no one had the brightest idea of including dead celebrities? This was the perfect opportunity to throw in characters that died throughout the series. This is what we're working with? This is the level of creativity that came from these developers? I mean, for fuck's sake, this video is longer than the game itself! I'm getting off topic, but you see though, the arenas alone could have saved this game. All they needed to do was just take some time to play the end result of their game and think about it. Does this feel like a celebrity deathmatch game? Like a good CDM game? If it was up to me, I would have implemented these changes, along with a way, way better create a celebrity mode, but... Yeah, if characters are very limited to basic attacks, then you need to throw in some stage hazards and use that battle damage to your advantage. If every item not only dealt some damage, but left a specific injury appearance to the character, every item would be unique and worth picking up. What if throwing that jug full of bugs at the opponent had the bugs leave bite marks all over the character, and now that character has this distorted look which stays that way throughout the match, or they get even uglier as more items are used against them, leaving an even more gruesome appearance. And if they only use the items that are in this game, such as the musket, then let the musket shoot holes through the opponent's torso, have the musket blow up a limb, but only give it one prize, it's an overpowering weapon. Have the crossbow leave arrows stuck on the victim, have the tennis balls get swallowed up by the victim so it makes them all lumpy, and if you manage to land at least 10 tennis balls on the opponent, then have the opponent explode. You see what I mean? There are so many ways to create the perfect Celebrity Deathmatch game. It's not that hard. So that was Celebrity Deathmatch the game. But guess what? There's a PS1 version. And this one is a little more different from the PS2 version. Enough to have to talk about it. If you play The Simpsons Wrestling for the PS1, then get ready to see an exact replica of what not to do with a wrestling game. But worse is that this isn't a wrestling game. It's Celebrity Deathmatch. So what is this? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's even worse than the PS2 version. Look at these clunky ass controls, man. Jesus. Come on. Jesus! Oh. Sure, dude! Alright, 
let's wait for that right for it. Ah, it Come on. Oh, 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 oh you just take a time. Just lay down there, you piece of shit. Lay down. Let him stomp on you. Stomp on his nuts, Johnny. Oh, this thing. It's an embarrassment. So much potential, and yet they chose the easiest and shittiest solution for a CDM game. How about we compare the two? So let's see which version is crappier and capable of killing more brain cells than its counterpart. Starting with the graphics. I don't know which is worse. On one hand, we have horrendous graphics that make celebrities look like mannequins. And it doesn't help that all characters' fighting stance is the epitome of popping a squat. Well, on the other hand, they're slightly less damage inducing until they start attacking. We might have to give this one a draw. On to the sound department. We could really use some. Matches are so boring I'm willing to jump into the ring and fight blindfolded with a chainsaw. But if the deathmatch is this silent, well, at least our audience is being brutally honest. Uh, let's move on to the death moves. I hate to say this, but it looks like the death moves on the PS2 version are the closest thing we have to brutality. Nobody is technically killing each other in the PS1 version. It's nice to see that the combatants aren't limited to one finishing move, as every character can perform two finishing moves, only they don't appear to show any signs of penetration or disembowelment. You can also finish off your opponents using basic moves, but in a game based on celebrity deathmatch, why would you settle for it? But it's not all that bad. There's a time to put pressure on the celebrities, because once it expires, the fan of Fandemonium will descend from above and slice both combatants' heads clean off. So I guess you can pull off one fatality. Only it means your character dies as well. There's even a way to avoid having your character's head get sliced off, which is by having your opponent knock you down and just stay down. The fan won't lower all the way down, only enough to cut the opponent's head off if the opponent is standing up. But it still counts as a loss. I guess it is what it is, folks. Both versions are just as disappointing as the 5th and 6th seasons of the series. But I'd say the PS1 version is far worse than ever. Actually, a few positive things that the PS1 version did better than the PS2 version. I like the audience members because it includes Courtney Love, Burt Reynolds, Christian Slater, Ashley Judd, Paul Reiser, and Angelina Jolie. I think Damon Wayans is one of them, but it's hard to tell because you can only see his head and he doesn't have three frame sprites like the others in the front row. I honestly would have preferred to see the character models that you play as look like this. At least. Mills wouldn't look like Squidward, Johnny wouldn't look like Buzz Lightyear, and Nick wouldn't have that eye twitch and look like Mario. Another good thing is that both Nick and Johnny are wearing their host outfits when they fight. This version did not include the create a celebrity mode, and that's good since we know that they wouldn't even try with it. I mean, they were so lazy that they couldn't even give Zatar the alien the correct proportion of his size. Look at that thing. Just like with the PS2 version, there's no background music, however, they actually included the full version of the theme song, but you can only hear it when viewing a celebrity's record. Wow. There are even secret characters you can play as, which happen to be the creators of the game, and that's fantastic, because now we can choose them and purposely have their asses get kicked for creating such a disgraceful game. Why did Marilyn Manson have a different costume on? Laziness, my friends. They would have had to add a few touches here and there to give him that specific look. And rule number one in their book is never stray away from reusing assets. So stick to that default polygon model. No one will question it. Right? Is it the alien? Yeah, no one's gonna think that's actually a guy wearing an alien costume. But this also has to be the reason why we didn't get Cousin Grimm. Because of that third leg. Carmen Electra also has a different appearance. 
That is not even remotely close to what she looks like in real life. This costume is a reference to the 1985 film The Last Dragon. But why is Busta wearing it? By the way, there are no special moves in this version, making the gameplay excruciatingly stale. To my surprise, I can't believe they bothered to give us a steel cage for the arena, something they couldn't even give us for the PS2 version. But there's nothing really impressive about it. This game plays more like a tank-controlled wrestling game, so you can bounce people off the ropes, and if they're in a steel cage, they won't bounce off the ropes. I think that's the only difference between the two arenas. Sadly. There are less celebrity characters in this game when compared to the PS2 version. This one does not include Dennis Rodman, Carrot Top, Cindy Margolis, Jerry Springer, Shannon Doherty, Ron Jeremy, Anna Nicole Smith, Cousin Grimm, The Mummy, or NSYNC members. That's a lot of missing characters. Good, right? If it were any other game, then I'd be pissed, but for this game, it's a breath of fresh air. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that this game has less replayability. Because it turns out that the only way to perform both character fatalities is by completing the Death by Elimination mode. Here, you literally have to beat every single character in the game to unlock the second finishing move for the character you played as. So I spent... No, I mean, I wasted hours playing this game just to see both finishing moves for every character. Trust me, it wasn't worth it. The finishing moves look like generic attacks. It doesn't look like you even eliminated your opponent. This was a painful experience. But you know what? I'm glad I finally went through it and captured everything that needed to be said. Because I will never play this game ever again! Oh, God. It's hard to time it. No, no. You, you, you do it. You do it. I hate this game so much. You don't... Puta madre. Both versions are the opposite of a good time. You will feel like destroying the games after putting up with it for an hour long. I just wish they never advertised it with these greatly detailed clay models in the cover and the rest of the promotional art. And every time I look at the cover, it gives me hope. Hope that somehow I can make it work and enjoy the only game based on Celebrity Deathmatch. But that's physically impossible with what we got. You can't just turn off your brain, you have to get high times 20, have episodes of the show playing next to you, and play a track from the CDM soundtrack every time a match begins, just to make up for the lack of background music during a match. But this... still won't work. Just stop. Look in the mirror, and accept it. Accept that the games are shite. And they belong in the garbage can. However, the main case, the manuals, and the game discs themselves, they are literally the only good things about the games. So I can't get them away. These detailed shots look amazing. It's without a doubt the only good thing about the games. And it's not even truly part of a game experience. What they really should have done was use gameplay models to keep true fans away from such a waste of a game. Do yourself a favor, Deathmatch fans, and never touch this game, even if it's sold for free. That's it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to give this video a chance to grow. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters for their impeccable generosity. Your support means a lot to me, and you are part of the reason why I try to make the best content that I can. And if you like this content, check out the rest of my channel. You'll find more entertainment from super franchises I like to cover, such as Mortal Kombat, Dragon Ball Z, Celebrity Deathmatch, Men in Black, The Mask, Batman Comics, The Terminator, TMNT, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil, and more. If you're a Patreon supporter, check out my exclusive videos such as the Gantz content, and if you'd like to show your support, go to my Patreon and support the channel, which is only a dollar. Sacrifice that the chicken for extra quality content, my friend. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video, and remember to have an awesome day.
And this concludes my reaction to the shameful celebrity death deathmatch game failure of failures. I didn't have a whole lot to say because I have two more videos to get to. And I hope you all enjoyed. Don't get to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And as always, I'm Hardcore Christopher. Keep it hardcore, everyone.